Guys, welcome back to the channel. On the last episode, we made this plug for our carbon fiber valve cover project. This plug was a 3D printed uh, plug, uh, which has been coated in Duracoat surface primer and has since been wet sanded and polished. And what we're going to do today is we're gonna prep this plug uh, in order to make a fiberglass mold off of it. So let's get started. Okay, so since the last episode, I went out to the hardware store and I got some MDF uh, board here with this, uh, I don't know what kind of coating this is, but it's like a plastic-y coating. And this is going to be our work surface here for uh, making this fiberglass mold. I needed a little bit more workspace and this is a lot less rickety. So this is gonna work good. I did make a mistake in the last video. In the last video, you saw me polishing this part and I was using uh, some compound that I had laying around. It was a Meguiar's Ultimate Finish Compound. Now, if you know anything about body work and polishing and all that kind of stuff, there are two different main groups of compounds and polishes. And the difference between them is whether or not they are body shop safe. So the ultimate polish that I used in the last video was not body shop safe. It has silicon content in the uh, polish itself. So it's got silicon oil, silicon fillers. Those are not something you wanna have around your shop if you're doing work like this. And it was just a mistake on my part. I know better, uh, I just wasn't thinking. Uh, I usually run uh, the Meguiar's professional stuff, the M series, like the 105 and 205 products. Uh, and that's what I previously used on the last paint job that I did. Um, but in order to decontaminate this the best that I can, I went out and I bought some uh, pre-prep. This is a uh, Eastwood brand pre-prep. It's basically like a naphtha and they advertise it to be, you know, a good silicon remover, wax remover, all that good stuff. So we're gonna use that and we're gonna get this uh, plug all cleaned up, uh, wipe it down. And I'm going to go over this entire surface here uh, get it wiped off clean because it's got some polished residue from the new stuff. None of the old stuff was used on this, just the new stuff. And uh, we're going to clean it again. I did clean it one time before I started polishing because I didn't want to contaminate my new pads or anything like that. So it's already been desiliconed once. I polished it, so I might have freed up some molecules out of the surface. I'm going to desilicon uh, it again using the pre prep. And then we'll get this whole table cleaned up. And I'm going to mask off this half of the table uh, so that we can spray some PVA coating on it. So I'll get started on that now. Okay, so I didn't have any filleting wax, so what I'm gonna use is this uh, basically modeling clay putty. I'm gonna push that into all the tight radiuses here so we don't have any release problems. And then I'm gonna shave it with that little piece of plastic there. It's got about the right radius I want and wipe it down. Um, I'm gonna try to do this with gloves on to try to keep the part clean, so just wipe it off. Uh, but we'll see, sometimes it plays six to your finger. So uh, let's give it a shot and see if I can get this all molded in. Okay, so I'd give that like a three out of 10. If you wanna do this by the filleting wax, the uh, clay it just doesn't stick to the surface well. So you have a tendency to lift off. Um, and not only that, but it's kinda, because it's, it wants to lift off, you have to leave it relatively thick, uh, you know, so you can't get it real tight in. I try to shave it with the uh, little pick there and it basically tears away from the surface. So that's not what you want. 
So get the filleting wax, try it out. Um, this is gonna work for me. I have enough flange on there that I should have no problems. Uh, I'll have plenty of trim length and stuff like that, so there's no, no issue there. So I'm just gonna have to wipe this back down with cleaner again, and then we'll start the waxing process. For uh, waxing, I'm using this Partol paste number two, and we're gonna do like three or four coats of this. Um, put it on, buff it off, put it on, buff it off, put it on, buff it off, etc. I keep doing that. And uh, so I'll get this part cleaned up and then we'll go from there. So we'll get the wax on. Okay, so I got that all waxed up, and uh, before I spray the PVA, what I wanted to do is I got some muslin here, just like a cotton, and uh, basically wanted to lay out what my fiberglass needed to be, and I got a nice little uh, template here, so that way tomorrow uh, I can cut all my fiberglass out and sort of pre-cut it uh, to the general sizes. I'll lay, cut my veil, cut some of that stuff. Um, I won't cut the uh, chop strand mat because we'll probably actually tear that uh, to get a feathered edge. Um, but this is what we're gonna size everything off of. And this should give us, if we tuck it in here, if I get centered, if you tuck it in here, uh, you get a nice, uh, just right to the edge there. And I gave myself about half an inch all the way around. Um, we don't need this full flange. We just need to fill out as much of it as possible and make sure we try to get it all the way out. Um, so we'll use this as our template and we should be good to go. Now, what I did was I got the uh, air compressor drained out, put some fresh desiccant in it, and we are gonna load up some uh, Partol. This is PVA. Uh, it is basically like a, a separating agent, water soluble. So I'm going to swap my regulator and desiccant over to another cheap spray gun and uh, strain this through some strainers and then we'll get to shooting. So we're gonna shoot a really light mist coat and we're gonna do about three or four of these light mist coats so we get good coverage. So I'm gonna get everything set up and we'll get started. <laughs> There should be. So I went ahead and I, I taped down a piece of uh, paper that you saw in the hyperlapse there and uh, basically adjusted my coat until <clears throat> basically it was like a super fine mist. And I had to really look at the paper at an angle to see if I was getting like any sheen or even deposit. Um, and then I could, you know, stab it really close to the paper and get a little bit of green to make sure it's flowing out. So that's how I sprayed it. And I probably put Mm, seven coats, six, maybe six coats on this, of uh, that feathering real light, um, probably about 10 inches back from the surface. So there is like a slight, I don't know if you can see it there, like the slightest bit of texture, um, but that's not gonna be too bad. That is, like if you touch it, it's just the slightest satiny feel to it. Um, I'm gonna touch the edge here, I won't touch anywhere in the middle. But, um, so it just has a slight, it's not even really orange peel texture, uh, just like a really, I don't know, it's just like a, a almost like a matte uh, texture. So uh, this is gonna sit, I have the room set up that uh, the heat's gonna stay on overnight here. And then uh, tomorrow morning about 6 a.m., probably about eight hours from now, I'm gonna go ahead and spray the gel coat. And uh, I have a humidity gauge in here and the humidity is pretty low. 
uh, so I shouldn't have too many problems here with the PVA getting moisture in it. Um, but I think we're in pretty good shape. So uh, I'm gonna go in, call it a night, clean up, and uh, yeah, tomorrow when you see me on here again, I am going to load up some gel coat in the gun and get to uh, lay in my first bit of fiberglass. Never done it before, so we'll give it a shot. Okay, so it's D-Day. So what I'm gonna do here is I have the gel coat. We are using the orange tooling polyester gel coat part 1188. So this is the composite envisions tooling stuff. Um, I'm going to mix this stuff up at 2% by weight. Um, and I think I'm gonna need about 10 ounces. Uh, 10 ounces, I'm guessing I can get on this. I, I estimated, well, I need 25 mils of thickness. And I'm guessing that the VOC content in this is somewhere in the 50% um, range. So that will get me, that will get me about the right thickness of material. So just did the surface area, the thickness of the final coat, and then figuring it's gonna bleed off probably 50% by weight um, to, to the room. So it might be a little bit much, might not be, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Um, but that's what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna mix up 10 ounces. I have to shoot fast, so I'm gonna spray like a light, um, not dust coat, just a light coat on this, and then give that like a minute, maybe two minutes, and then I'm gonna start hammering on the coat. Uh, basically, probably like four or five mil thickness coats uh, each time, and I need to get this, all this shot in like under 10 minutes because it flashes off super fast and it'll start to gel in the gun. Again, we're gonna shoot the uh, modified two millimeter cheap Harbor Freight gun. So if we have any disasters, it's not the end of the world. It was 13 bucks and it is what it is. So that is something that I'm willing to do. Uh, much rather ruin this than ruin something else. So uh, I'm gonna get the room prepped, get going, mixed up, and then get everything set up and ready to go. And then the second that that pours it in, I'm gonna start a timer on my tablet and uh, we're gonna, start shooting, so wish me luck. Okay, so I got 30 mils of coating on there. It actually took about 20 ounces to fill that 30 mils. So it, uh, I had to mix up two batches and shoot as fast as I could to try to get the second batch on before uh, it flashed off and started to gel. So I got a good coating on there. We got 30 mils. That should do good. So we got the fan running, try to suck some of the air out of here. You can't hear me because I got this on. So um, I gotta wait now about an hour and a half. And then after the hour and a half is done, uh, it'll be time to start laying up fiberglass. So I'm gonna go get everything upstairs here, get start cutting some uh, veil and get it prepped and ready to go. Okay, so it's been about an hour and a half here. The gel coat is just now tacking up good enough that it'll leave a fingerprint, but nothing sticks to your finger. Um, so we're gonna give about another 10 minutes just to be safe. And then we're gonna start laying up the uh, fiberglass veil. So I'll try to get everything set up and then we'll see how this goes. Okay, so my buddy popped over and helped me with the first velcro. coat. You can see that the uh, part itself turned out pretty good. Um, I got it tight. I don't have any air bubbles on the actual part. There are some sections out here where we had to sort of cut the veil that there's little uh, bumps and stuff like that. We got to tack down the best that we can. Like this guy here, this is actually just like a two layers stacked on top of each other. Um, but I think we're going to be okay. Uh, everything seems, this is a little raised here. 
Uh, that's actually just a pile of resin, so you need to get that sort of tamped down, but there are some heavy spots of resin. Uh, I'm learning as I go here. Obviously, this is the first piece of fiberglass I've laid, uh, but it seemed to go okay. The only thing I will say is, I'm not sure if it's too cold in here or what, but it is taking way longer for this to kick off uh, than I originally anticipated. I was originally anticipating laying like every, a layer of fiberglass every hour or so. It's been almost 30 minutes and this is still pretty tacky. Um, so I did check the resin. I checked like six times. <laughs> uh, I definitely measured it out right. I think it's just too cold in the room. So uh, increasing the temperature of the room here a little bit, trying to get this to kick off because I want the gel coat to, you know, uh, get that a little bit of heat in it. Um, so the gel coat sort of tacks up, but uh, yeah, so we'll see how it goes here. Once this settles up and starts to get in a little bit firmer, I'll get the next one on camera. Uh, he didn't want to be on camera, so I said, yeah, no problem. And uh, we just went ahead and did it, and he showed me some tips. So uh, I'm glad he was here because that was a huge help because I probably would have started panicking when everything started pulling and not wanting to lay flat. So uh, having someone here to sort of show you the ropes the first time is definitely a good idea. But we got first layer of veil down. I'm gonna put another layer of veil down. And then um, I think on the next layer of veil, I'm actually gonna rip it into smaller sections. Uh, so it's a little bit more manageable now that this first piece is down. And then uh, that way we can, I won't need as much, uh, you know, as many hands holding corners while we're just trying to like sort of stretch it down and, and uh, should be okay. So try to get the next one on camera. Well, it took forever, but it finally flashed off. So what I did is I just scoured the outside edge here, and I'll try to do this every uh, layer that gets sort of cheesy. That way we can just break this off at the end and we won't have too much trouble, uh, you know, cutting and all that other stuff. So this is just now kind of in a tacky, uh, I call it like a little past like cheese texture. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mix up in our batch and lay another veil coat down. Okay guys, so everything was going so good and then the last coat of fiberglass, I don't know what happened, but my chop strand mat, this is a 14 ounce chop strand mat and you can see it just got bubbles all throughout it. So I don't know what changed or what happened or what I did, um, but the thicker stuff definitely has a tendency to lift more. Um, I did notice that, but this last, last one just sort of lifted up. Uh, I think we should be fine. There's um, two layers of veil, two layers of six ounce chop strand, and two layers of 14 ounce chop strand before this layer. So I think that we're gonna be in okay shape. I don't think the gel coat should lift out. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna let this thing cure uh, probably a full 24 hours, maybe even a touch more just to be safe. And then we'll try to pop it out of the mold. Um, before we pop it out of the mold, once we do get it checked out, I'm going to cut the edges back to the steel. Uh, everything's overlaid past the edge of the steel right now. So we'll do that. Uh, and then that should give us a nice clean edge to try to pop everything loose. So let's hope that it looks good. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever done fiberglass. It was going great. And I was like, oh, this is easy. And then, you know, something like this happens and it brings you back down to earth. So. I think it's uh, pretty, gonna should be pretty sturdy when this is all said and done. It's definitely uh, a decent amount of fiberglass on here. So we'll see what happens. So I was not trying to delaminate this off of video, <laughs> but I went to pick up the part and I just cut around the outside. And when I picked it up, the weight of the steel was enough that it just plopped off the bottom. 
So, uh, yeah, this came out great. This popped off easy, um, obviously. Now I can get the plug out. Um, this is, you know, this is cured almost a day and a half now. So I feel pretty confident that I can take it out. Um, the backside is only probably about 15 hours old, but that should be fine. So I'm thinking, I don't know, get some air or like, I gotta get like pry this up somehow without ruining it. Um, so I don't know, Let's see what I can do here. I feel the PVA loosening up. It's not like there's not PVA on it. Uh... Alright. Plan C. I have a screw and I have a drill. I'm going to put a screw in it so I have something to pull on. Okay, so it's about 15 minutes later, let the water soak. I'm gonna take a plastic spatula here and just try to dig at the edge. I need to put more draft angle on this. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There, something just happened. Some more water. Now it's like lifted on this edge. I can get the water down inside. Come on, baby. Do your thing. Tell the water so it runs down. Just one running water inside of it. You can actually hear it sort of suctiony. Come on. I don't want to pry it because I'm afraid I'll chip the gel coat. She's really tight. Yeah! Yeah! All right. Eh? Eh? It's perfect! Shit, son. Okay. Let me wipe this out. Hold on. Look at that! That's almost like I know what I'm doing. I don't, but it almost is like I know what I'm doing. I'm happy. That, that is like, man, when you do something the first time and you've never done it and it like works, that's, that's, that's awesome. Okay. Look at that. That is our fiberglass mold, which is freaking sweet. I mean, there's like nothing. I mean, it is spot on. So huh, there you go, guys. That is how you make a fiberglass mold the very first time. Never did fiberglass, never did gel coat, never did plugs, and it worked. Now I will say this is a little ugly, this like putty thing, I wouldn't do it that way again. I would highly recommend buying the filleting wax so you get a nicer edge. But dude, I mean seriously, that is so smooth. It is so smooth, you cannot feel this. This is like glass in here is how smooth it is. I'm Tickle Pink. I'm going to get this cleaned up. That is the episode. I did not want to pop the mold tonight. I literally just wanted to pick the part up and move it. And it separated the plate off it. So I figured, well, what the hell? So there is a perfectly good fiberglass mold. Next episode, we infuse carbon.